Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. Uh, welcome to the sunny Cheshire Lanes. This is uh, this is Monica's area. As I'm sure you're all well aware of it now. We're not in Preston. We're not at home. Um, we are. Yeah, we're in the Cheshire. We're in the Cheshire Lanes. Did a few rides around here in the winter, and these roads, because there's just so many farms around here, these roads are covered in covered in cow poo. If we're going to be uh, PR correct, but since the sun's come out, since the last few days it's been dry, the roads dried up, and uh, they're, they're pretty mega for riding. I'm not going to lie. Pretty race ride day to day. Got the uh, the puller road race tomorrow, which is slight, which is about 45 minutes north of my house, like where I live. So uh, pretty local, pretty local national B race. Should be good fun. A few decent riders are going to be on the start line, so yeah, should be a good day. Didn't feel great yesterday on my, my, I did a little rest day spin, spin the legs out. Did not feel good. But just after a day of taking it easy, I feel but I feel a lot better today. It's uh, like Zwift racing. I was having a chat with my coach about this, but with Steve. My opinion on Zwift racing in terms of fatigue on the body and training stress is the races aren't long enough to create like training stress, a high training stress score. So on training peaks and stuff, you know, it, they don't look that hard in terms of how they alter your fitness, your fatigue um, scores in terms of the, 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 the data on the graphs. But just from the type of efforts that Zwift Racing is, you know, it's, it's riding at zone three and it's, it's, it's spiking from zone three, it's attacking from zone three and straight back into zone three. It creates an awful lot of fatigue on the body that isn't necessarily refre reflected in, in, you know, in training peaks and in, in my data. During all the Zwift racing and the Zwift season, I haven't been able to do a whole lot of training, long training out on the road. Once the Nationals are done and, done, done and dusted on the 28th of March, I'm gonna be focusing more on my road stuff and we can get back into a proper training schedule. But yeah, for now, standard, standard pre-race uh, pre ride, one hour 30 with some tempo and a couple of sprints. Just a few openers to try and freshen up the legs and open up the legs ahead of racing tomorrow. Okay, so for the, uh, for the local viewers of the channel, I'm currently riding around the Mac Forest area. Uh, that's the Cat and Fiddle. Just drops back down into Macclesfield. Pretty famous climb in the area. It's been used in like the Tour of Bern and stuff. Right over there in the distance, you can see Manchester. It is no doubt a pretty scenic part of the world. Like the roads are just so quiet. I mean, the Cat and Fiddle is pretty busy because that's like a main road joining Macclesfield with Sheffield. As soon as you're off the Cat and Fiddle and onto these smaller country roads, there's no traffic at all. But if you didn't see my live stream uh, of the Zwift race, last week then for those guys uh in that race in the process of that race we did a big climb like a 20 30 minute climb and i set a new ft or i set a new 20 minute power and it's uh it was quite a substantial i mean it was about 10 10 watt increase no 15 watt increase on my previous uh my previous 20 minute power so you know my my zones my power zones have adjusted accordingly and it's uh it's quite tricky to like remind myself that you know, for example, today I was doing some 10 minute uh, or some, some zone three efforts. Normally I do those efforts at around 300 watts. Now with the new FTP, I'm doing them around 315 watts. And every now and again, I find myself slipping back down to 300 just because that's what I'm so used to. So it's like a hard process. Even riding zone two, my standard mid zone two has increased from around 220 five to like 240. It's just that little bit of extra pressure you've got to keep applying to the pedals. It'll come, but it's just at the start, it's like, having to constantly remind myself. So that was 90, around 95 minutes of riding. Just the standard, usual pre-race uh, pre race ride structure. Felt a lot better today than I did yesterday. Uh, seems to be coming around from this little batch of fatigue that I've kind of accumulated from all of Zwift racing. Sort of short-term plan now is obviously to take the rest of the day as easy as possible, race tomorrow, and then kind of taper down a little bit uh, for Zwift Nationals, which at the end of next week down in London. And then after that, uh, just completely reset, refocus, and start to build again for the road season. And uh, yeah, everything that comes with that, the national series, the, the crits, some more racing abroad. We've got a pretty jam-packed road season for so um yeah i'm looking forward to just kicking it off now and getting stuck in <laughs> come here come here Whew. yo 
and uh, and as quick as that guys we are back home walking the dogs came home from Monica's house so I had to get had to get all my stuff ready ahead of uh, racing tomorrow yeah the weather's looking good drier I don't think I've had a dry or slight warm race yet so if it, if it stays dry tomorrow that would be sick um don't know how i'm gonna go tomorrow I haven't felt great this week in training and also uh in zwift racing i think i have documented quite a bit you know it's, it's caught up with me a little bit and um i like i don't feel too fatigued in, in sort of general day-to-day -day life like i don't feel run down or anything i feel i feel fine uh so yeah i think yesterday and also today's uh, a couple of shorter, easier days will 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 benefit me well, and um, I should be I should be good again tomorrow. It's gonna be interesting to see how how I feel in in a in a race like longer than an hour. I've obviously been doing a lot of Zwift racing, which is short, intense stuff, 50 minutes, you know, at most an hour. So tomorrow's race is 120k, probably gonna be about two and a half hours of racing. So yeah, I reckon I'll be good for an hour, and then I'll just uh, I'll start cramping and all sorts. But yeah, right now we're currently just walking. This lunatic and this lunatic. Yo, Sam, come say hi to the vlog. Sam, Sam. So bike is washed. Oh, I appreciate everyone's comments telling me to tell me to get a haircut. A haircut is coming. I'm just lazy with hair, getting my haircut. Anyway, bike is washed. Kit is ready to go for tomorrow's race. The last thing I need to prepare is this. Uh, oh, is a handle. The last thing I need to prepare is my new onboard cameras. I set my new drift camera or cameras. They sent me two out. They sent me the standard 1080p one, and they sent me the new the new 4K camera. I set them both up with the app on my on my iPhone. It's a very simple process, the same sort of process that you get with, with the GoPro, if you know if I'm gonna compare it to, to something. You just turn it on and it connects via Wi-Fi uh, to your phone. My phone's just run out of battery, sick. From the device, you can change the basic settings with this little screen uh, back here, but from the phone, you can you can really delve into the settings. Change the ISO limit, the, the frame rate, the quality and format the memory card. And also set up the instant recording feature, which as soon as you press the on button, uh, the camera the camera starts recording like like it is like it is right now. One of the cool little features that I did notice about the drift camera is this uh, this little swivel on the front. The orientation of the the screen is directed by this little uh, this little swivel. So whatever way the arrow is pointing there, that white arrow, that's the orientation that the camera records in. So with the setup on my bike that I'm going to show you right now, um, the I'm it's in this position here, and therefore the little arrow needs to be at the top. So I just twist it like like so and now i'm going to be recording in 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio the plan is to have one camera on the front of my bike and one camera on the back uh, but for tomorrow's race i haven't yet got a seat post uh, mount for this camera so for tomorrow i'm only going to be using uh, i'm only going to be using the forward facing camera i'm going to take off the battery though and, and put in the long life battery so it's slightly thicker or it's quite a bit thicker to be fair uh, and then that just simply slots in like so. Now we should have plenty, plenty of battery for the race. All right, let's switch over to the bike. I do get a fair few questions asking how I mount my my onboard cameras to my bike. First off, I use this uh, overpriced K-Edge mount. It's like 50 or 60 quid. It's got a GoPro integration with the uh, Wahoo element. Great mount, great quality, just very expensive. I ordered this little, this little gadget under here, which literally cost me like three pounds off Amazon, I think. It's the GoPro connector, but it goes into like a standard camera thread right there. And basically the operation is the camera just slots on, we screw it in and we are good to go. Looking forward to testing this thing out tomorrow. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video to see how we get on with this. But that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really, really appreciate a like on this video. And with that being said, I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Peace. And I'll leave you alone.